Yeah, so one one question that we thought would be good to answer, especially because we have Steve here, who's a lot smarter on this math stuff than us, <laughs> so he can correct me I, if I'm I wrong. Like, I like experienced or seasoned or something. Though. Yeah. <laughs> More spicy on the topic, though. <laughs> um, sensors in Project Spark. So people have questions about sensors. What do we mean by sensors? Um, so you go into uh, go into do, the do side or one side, right? Yeah, it's wet. So yeah, sorry. Uh, so you have a bunch of different sensors you can use. You can use detect, see, bump, uh, bump terrain also, in trigger zone, distance, and ray cast. So people always ask about like what what's the difference between them? How should you, we use sensors? And um, the one to talk about first is the bump sensor and why you should only use it sparingly. Um, so the bump sensor is based on what it's looking for is every single object in Project Spark has something called a collision mesh. And a collision mesh is basically the shape of that object um, a bit simpler, but that means, all right, so if you think about a shape, um, the, best, the best way I think about it is, you know, everything in Project Spark is made out of polygons. Yeah. Um, let's, let's, let's make it a little bit more simpler for, for the common folk, right? Like, so let's think of a collision mesh as like the wrapping paper that you would put on top of a toy. So if you have your complex like Power Ranger Megazord thing and you put wrapping paper on it, you're not going to see all the detail in there. Uh, that's that's, really, that's yeah. really what a collision mesh is. It just covers it up. Uh, it's a simpler version of, of all the cool geometry, which is part right. of the stuff. That makes a lot more sense than <laughs> me trying to explain the polygons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that, that requires that you understand what polygons are right. and, and how true. we're using them and, and yeah, why we use triangles over just everything else. Triangles are planners, three points. So three points in space, you know exactly where they are by having three points. If you have two points, it's a line, goes on forever, you don't know, blah, blah. And so even when you have kind of the wrapping paper version of that object, it still has a lot of a lot of detail to it compared to a sphere or a square. Um, so you have all of the, diff of the different surfaces on that collision mesh. They're looking for when they bump something. That means you have a lot of different, basically, I don't know if pieces is the right way to yeah, describe it. Yeah, yeah. So with the polygons, the things that you're talking about, each polygon has a point. It's a vertex. The, that's how we know the shape of stuff, right? Uh, so what Bump is doing for people who kind of know, and you can think of this as expensive as well, is it's doing a vertex to vertex check. So think about all the hair that you have on your head. If every hair had to check against every hair on your head, if, if we were colliding, it would be very expensive because there's a lot of hair, right? So the more vertex well, not that much hair, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm losing some too. So if, if we had to do that every time, every frame, it could be really slow. And, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong or if you found a simpler version of exp uh, expressing this. But that's no, how that's, I that's better than that's that. That's how I understand it, and that should help um, yeah. the community. So that's why bump um, and bump terrain are both things that should be used sparingly. Um, really, they should only be used if you definitely need to check when something bumps another thing. We typically, when we build stuff in Project Spark, we don't use those two. The uh, the best two sensors... Um, or most used sensors. Yes. <laughs> Let's not be sensor biased. That's true. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I had sensor bias there. Um, but the, the least expensive ones, uh, and by expensive we mean ones that um, take up the least amount of processing power, are distance and detect. Um, because distance is just checking for a basic you know distance to. Um, which is, I guess it's also kind of drawing a sphere like Detect is drawing, in a way. Because Distance is looking for a distance to anything within a sphere of you. Mm -hmm. um, and Detect is, is also looking for anything within this sphere of you. And spheres are, uh, they're very um, inexpensive to kind of calculate what's inside of this sphere of uh, influence or whatever you want to call it. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's why uh, Detect and Distance are basically, both of them are kind of, drawing spheres around you based on what you set. With uh, detect, you can kind of change. You can go into your brain's properties and actually go to sensors, turn on your detect sensor and yeah, increase yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's that's how you can, oh, yeah, there you go. Um, that's how you can kind of change. Um, sure. yep. Go to true. true. Uh, you can I'm show all there. of them, I'm yeah, yeah. There. So yeah, a lot of the enemies utilize, utilize this under the hood to make them different. So when they're doing their uh, ally check, they were actually checking uh, within the same detect spear. And we have mm -hmm. them pretty small just for like wandering too. We have it really small so that it feels like, uh, it feels like they're seeing you, right? But it, they're not actually using C, they're not using uh, bump or any of those other things. You're just using detect at a small, yeah. smaller scale. 
and distance basically does the same thing except you actually set how how large the distance is like if it's five meters that means a five meter distance in the sphere of you so it's it's doing the same general thing of it is still a sphere of influence um, but it's doing it that way C is also um, pretty inexpensive because it's just drawing a cone. It's drawing yeah. angles basically. And the main thing with this is it's dependent on character forward. Either. Exactly. So, but but because it's drawing a cone, it is um, it is only kind of going out in one direction. So it's generally less versatile than the other ones because detect um, kind of can envelop every part of you. Uh, same with distance too because they're drawing spheres around you. This is drawing a cone outwards from the front of you, um, how far you want to get. Yeah. Um, and we'll look at trigger too. Yeah, and so trigger zone is a tiny bit, uh, I've been told it's a tiny bit more uh, quote unquote expensive than detect and distance yeah. because a cube, um, it a cube takes a tiny bit more processing than a sphere. Yeah, just a little bit. But the, the cool parts about this is you can change the size of it in different ways. Like detect is always from that center. We make it bigger or smaller depending on the radius, but you can you know rotate yeah. this around you can make it longer you can make it smaller so it's really cool it's what we use for complicated attacks if we're gonna like uh car not for carl's nor but like other characters uh that want to have like a straight rectangle of damage we can do that yeah um the last one raycast so raycast is something that is also um a quote-unquote expensive type of sensor because uh, well, you know raycasting more than <laughs> more than us. You did you did courses on raycasting. Yeah, I did some courses. Uh, it's on the it, on the wind side. Yeah, it, oh, it's, it's and now I did it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard uh, to really explain, but um, yeah, it, it's expensive, and I feel like that's what you need to know. Like, try to use this sparingly. Um, it goes from one point to infinity, or until you tell it to stop, and it checks everything along that point. So. That's what makes it the most expensive because it's it's just from one pixel. I can't even express like one beam of light, really. Yeah. yeah so. And so when you do use it, um, I mean, you can have a raycast run every single frame, but when possible, if you're using raycasting in um, in your game, if you don't, uh, or your world, if you don't know what raycasting is, we have tutorials on that. There's plenty of YouTube tutorials in Project Spark that explain what raycasting is. We won't go into that now because this is just tips and tricks about sensors. So you want to be careful when you do stuff like this, right? Because uh, it, before you put the looping on there, I thought you were going to do like countdown, 0.5 seconds raycast. It'll raycast every frame forever. Uh, yeah. But now looping, it's going to wait every, mm -hmm. uh, I guess the default wait time is one second. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to wait a second, and then it's going to count down again and raycast again. So that's kind of how you want to use it. You want to use it sparingly. Uh, I even put it down to like three frames, like check one frame every couple of three frames. Every, yeah, Interesting, so, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's I like I like to use stuff in frames, and um, another tip and trick there is like the game runs at 30 frames a second, so every second is 30 frames, so it just like can allow allows you to get more accurate if you want. Especially if you start having if you start having a game that's running slow, um, seconds and frames may not start matching up. Yeah. Like if uh, yeah. time actually becomes independent of of actually like of the frames running. Uh, if you have a game that's really slows down like I I was creating a video where I had um, 2,000 objects moving all at the same time I just needed mm -hmm. that for the video so it was running insanely slow um, but I was I was using sensors that I was using countdown timer of six seconds and it passed six seconds and things were still moving at one frame per second so like everything started moving again it's like no oh, okay. so I, I switched to frames and made it uh, yeah, I, I made it like uh, 600 frames um, to like to fix that. Well, uh, is there any more tips and tricks? Oh right, uh, one thing you guys were mentioning is uh, physics run before brains. Oh yeah. So yeah. therefore, with detect sensors, sometimes if you have a super fast moving object, um, it actually might not be detected. Yeah. So. Just be careful there. Um, That's a good point. There's different layers to how our engine works, and brains are. Um, I think after physics. So physics will always calculate first, 
uh, and you even if you're calling physics the brain is still going to be after like all the brain scripting is going to be after the physics call so certain things are just going to break down because of that the, the lack of communication there lack the one to one communication <laughs>